Please subscribe and don't forget to press the bell icon to get notified whenever we upload a new video. Okay, as 8 o'clock approaches, we'll be watching shares of SATs in Singapore today. Later today, the airport ground handling service provider reported a 16% jump in uh, Q2 net profits attributable to both shareholders. Uh, contributions from joint ventures and gains from asset disposals contributed to the bottom line. But the uh, company is expecting the operating environment to remain challenging because of, uh, well, you know, these things uh, when it involves air travel and airlines and all that. You never really know what's going on. There's always the oil price, uh, of course, at the tail end of worries. Alex Hungate, President and CEO of SATS, joins us from Singapore this morning. Alex, good morning, uh, morning to buddy. you. Um, there was a lot of Good morning, sir. There's a lot of asset shifting, right? If you didn't uh, take out the Hong Kong operations and didn't deconsolidate that, numbers would have been even more impressive, wouldn't they? Well, that's right. Yeah, I think people were surprised by the growth in profits from our overseas subsidiaries. So this was somewhat of a, a beat in terms of the analyst expectations. And I think that's because uh, places like Indonesia, India, China are growing very fast. Aviation is a market that's supporting the growth of the middle classes, and uh, we're benefiting from that. Right, and that seems to be the way forward. But right at home right now, I mean, you just, uh, they just opened up T4, Terminal 4 at Changi. I mean, uh, Singapore is way ahead of the curve in terms of advanced planning and foresight. Surely there's plenty of business just at home, uh, let alone all your overseas activities. Yes, we're very fortunate to be in a, uh, in a country and an airport that plans ahead. Uh, Terminal 4 will add another 16 million of passenger capacity. And then, believe it or not, we're already building Terminal 5 to the east of the existing airport, which will add uh, a total for Singapore of 135 million passenger capacity, probably by the end of the 2020s. Mm -hmm. And uh, tell me about some of the new, uh, some of the some of your new projects, some of the new, uh, some of the new investments and uh, places you're going. Uh, Turkey, Malaysia, uh, those were recently announced investments. So your footprint just gets bigger. Where beyond the previously announced ones can we look forward to uh, as we get into next year? Yeah, well, we have a strategy of using technology to digitally connect our operations across Asia. That helps the passengers with their more seamless experience. It also helps the shippers who are shipping the e-commerce packages, which is growing rapidly as well. So as we expand our footprint, that adds value to the existing network. It's what in Silicon Valley they would talk about as a network effect. So it is part of our strategy to continue to build out our points of presence. Just uh, last week, we announced with AirAsia that we we're expanding into Malaysia. They've been self-handling until now, uh, but they've decided to outsource their ground handling to SATs, starting in Malaysia and Singapore, but then uh, building out into um, Thailand, into Philippines, and also into Indonesia. These are markets where they're growing at double-digit percentage rates, so that'll be a good source of growth for us. You also mentioned right. so, Turkey. We, mm -hmm. uh, we have announced a relationship with Turkish Airlines where we'll become their caterer in their hub in the new airport oh. in Istanbul, which will likely be the largest airport in the world when it's finished at 150 million capacity. Right. Alex, uh, you talk about uh, e-commerce and, and digital, so it uh, kind of conjures up visions of you kind of being like a FedEx or a DHL with all these handheld devices, knowing exactly where everything is in the air on the ground when it positively absolutely has to be there overnight. Um, what the, how much of the uh, uh, global Amazon push, you know, Amazon recently started up operations in uh, Australia and Alibaba, uh, you know, come tomorrow, they begin uh, the annual big singles day shopping extravaganza. How much of the Amazon Alibaba catchment are you enjoying at SATS? Yeah, all of these big e-commerce giants are driving the volumes through airports, um, and therefore we see that volume as it comes through. Here in Singapore, we built an e-commerce handling hub that automates the sortation of e-commerce packages, and it's uh, primarily used by SingPost. Alibaba has a big investment in SingPost, and therefore a lot of their Southeast Asia volume is coming through our operation with that automated hub. So overall, as sales shift from the high street onto e-commerce, most of those have to be shipped by air because the consumer does not want to wait weeks for that package. They want to get it maybe that weekend or a couple of days later. So by definition, that's coming by air travel. Um, and that's where we come in. You know, the e-commerce volumes are growing very fast in all of our major markets. 
Alex, uh, it sounds like you're much more excited about the about digital commerce than things like uh, trying to keep uh, in-flight meals and the bread from drying out too much. Is that the way forward? Uh, do you think that you're going to lighten up on food, linen, and the traditional in-flight services? Actually, there's a lot of exciting technology coming into the food space too. Um, at SATS, we do not use preservatives at all. It's a fully natural process for how we create our food on board. But one of the challenges is maintaining the nutritional and uh, shelf life of the food. But actually, a lot of the interesting new technologies will be about how to uh, preserve the taste and quality in the air without using preservatives. And I think next, sometime next year, maybe I'll come back and tell you what we're going to be doing, because we're building quite a significant facility that will um, dramatically improve the quality of the, the food in the air for all travelers. Alex, uh, let's you and I hang out in business class and have a nice five-course meal in the air sometime. Thanks for being here today. We'll see you okay, soon, sir. Thanks, Penny. Alex Hungate. <laughs> Welcome back to Squawk Box. Today we are expecting a slightly lower open for the Korean markets this morning and we have some intergroup, intragroup deals to watch today in the Korean market starting with Hyundai Mipo Dockyard selling its 85% stake in high investments and securities in the markets. This is a stock brokerage firm. Uh, bro bro brokerage firm. Uh, the deal was for 340 million shares sold for 450 billion won, so about the 400 million US dollars that Hyundai Mipo Dockyard has secured in cash through this deal. Hyundai Mipo has also uh, bought some real estate from its parent company Hyundai Heavy Industries for 443 billion won. So these were intra-group uh, transactions. Uh, this is all part of self-rescue measures that Hyundai Heavy Industries and its affiliate companies are going through right now to improve their financial situation. We'll be watching for a reaction in high securities as well as Hyundai Mipo Dockyard. Separately, LG Corporation the holdings company of LG Group has acquired a 25% stake in LG International Corporation, which is the trading affiliate of LG Group. This deal is estimated to be a 300 billion won deal, price per share at 31,000 won. LG, through this acquisition, will be moving to create a holdings company within LG Group to improve its governance structure, saying that they are solid solidifying the structure at this time through this deal. As before this deal, LG International shares had seen a lot of very sharp fluctuations on the back of these shareholders, privately owned shareholders that could control these holdings. So that is expected to improve the governance structure at LG as well. Also, some names that reported third quarter earnings after market close, GS Caltex, unlisted but part of GS Holdings, has beat market upper expectations. We'll be watching for a reaction in this name. And Squawk Box will be right back with the opening numbers for Seoul and Tokyo. Stay with us.